Now, one of the most relevant issues in the problem of abortion is whether or not the fetus is going to count as a person. And remember that uh, for someone like Marcus, Marcus thought that this was going to end in kind of a stalemate. People on one side of the issue will argue that, that the fetus is a person, right? The pro-life position might take this view, while the pro-choice position might argue that the fetus is not a person. And so Marcus thought that we should try to avoid this dispute altogether. Someone like Thompson, for example, thought, well, no, we can, we can grant that the fetus is a person and still show that abortion, at least in some cases, are morally permissible. And someone like Warren thought, no, no, no you're going to have to show that the fetus is not a person. And so Warren attempted to do that. Now, the authors that we're concerned with, both uh, Matheson and Davis, as well as Ronson, they attempt to remain neutral regarding the moral status of the fetus, right? They don't want to say one way or the other whether the fetus is a person. However, there are different points in the reading where they do kind of suggest that if the fetus is actually a person, then it will likely just not be the case that a woman would have a right to the death of the fetus. Even Ronston seems to make this point. But let's just try to take a look at how that point factors in to the general argumentative strategy before we actually start dealing with the arguments that they consider. All right, so for example, recall what Thompson said. Thompson said, I have argued that you are not morally required to spend nine months in bed sustaining the life of that violinist. Remember, Thompson was using this violinist case. But to say this is by no means to say that if, when you unplug yourself, there is a miracle and he survives, right? So if the violinist were to su survive this whole ordeal, well, according to Thompson, you then would not have a right to turn around and slit his throat. You may detach yourself, even if the costs, even if that costs the violinist his life, but you have no right to be guaranteed his death by some other means if unplugging yourself does not kill him. So you might think about this quote that Thompson gives us in light of the sort of the ectogenesis uh, context that we are going to be considering now. So just think about in terms of ectogenesis being like this miracle that Thompson references where the fetus is able to survive, where we remove the fetus from the uh, woman's womb without killing it, right? Well, Thompson seems to think that you don't have a right to go ahead and kill the fetus, even if it survives. So that's an interesting way of thinking about this point. But uh, what about Warren? See, remember that Warren thought that the, the fetus was not a person, right? So let's just, let's consider this. So let's just hypothetically claim that Warren is right. The fetus is not a person at any point during the gestation. Of course, the infant would not count as a person either. Remember, Warren had this very important objection that she had to deal with. That was the, the infanticide objection. It looks like if the fetus is not a person, then an infant is not a person. So if it's morally permissible to kill the fetus, then it looks like it would be morally permissible to kill the infant. And that seems absurd, right? So we're going to need to think about how we would deal with that too. So consider what Warren said in response to the, the infanticide objection, right? The reason why Warren thought that uh, infanticide was not morally permissible, generally speaking, um, even though abortion was. So Warren says, quote, Thus, while the moment of birth may not mark any sharp discontinuity in the degree to which an infant possesses a right to life, it does mark the end of the mother's absolute right to determine its fate. And here's the key point. Indeed, if and when a late-term abortion could be safely performed without killing the fetus, she would have no absolute right to insist on its death. For example, if others wish to adopt it or pay for its care, and this is for the very same reasons that she does not have a right to insist that a viable infant be killed. So it looks like right here, Warren is saying, you know, if we could remove the fetus from the mother's womb without killing it, well, then the mother would not have a right to its death. And that's on the assumption that the fetus is not a person. So we could actually put this in the form of a conditional. I'm going to call this Warren's conditional. So if a fetus can be safely removed from the woman's womb without violating her right to autonomy, and it does look like ectogenesis would allow this, and if the conditions needed to provide the required care for the fetus exist, right? If, if there's people that are willing to adopt the fetus and take care of it after it's been um, you know, born into the world, well, then in most cases, the woman would not have a right to the death of the fetus. This looks like what Warren is saying in that, in that quote that we just considered. Again, if we can safely remove the fetus from the mother's womb without violating the mother's autonomy, 
And if this, the right conditions are provided, you know, maybe through adoption or through maybe some state institution, well then, in most cases, it looks like the mother would not have a right to the death of the fetus. And we can say that that's for the very same reason that she does not have a right to the death of an infant. And again, this is all on the assumption that Warren is right, that the fetus is not considered to be a person. So let's consider some initial thoughts or some argumentative strategies. First of all, we might wonder whether or not the technology for ectogenesis would ever be good enough, right? We might think that, oh yeah, that's just science fiction. It's just, it's just too impossible, but that's just not ever gonna really happen. Yet at the same point, we could probably make the same kind of case for other sort of arguments or other sort of issues that we might be concerned with. For example, cloning. You might think that, ah, oh, sure, that's an interesting question, but the technology that's going to be needed for cloning just is not ever going to be available to us. You might think that that's a way to argue here. You might also think that uh, perhaps the human womb has some very special property, right? Some metaphysical thing about it uh, that just cannot be replicated via some ectogenesis procedure, right? That technology just will not be developed because there's something special about the, uh, the human womb and that would make ectogenesis just not possible, right? Maybe it would be less safe for the fetus or something along those lines. Or you might think that ectogenesis is really kind of like playing God and we should never really play God. That's just something immoral to do. And that might be another way to argue too. However, keep in mind that whenever these sort of objections or arguments are put forward, what this really is just doing is it's getting off the boat right away, right? So it's just saying that the, the technology is just never gonna be good enough for one reason or another, or maybe it will be, but it's just not something we should do because it'd be like playing God. But take the playing God uh, case, for example. We do play God all the time, right? So it looks like we're playing God with regard to things like uh, nuclear weapons or the internet or uh, indoor plumbing. Uh, you might also think that we're playing God with regard to um, you know, the technology that already is available for preemie babies. You know, I mean, that is a kind of an artificial womb. And insofar as we don't find there to be any morally reprehensible, you know, problems with this kind of technology, well, then what's the problem with ectogenesis? Uh, likewise, you might think that with regard to this special property that a human womb might have, well, if we're going to stipulate that ectogenesis, the technology is plausible, that some future technology is going to be available to us, well, if we're going to go that far, we might as well also stipulate that whatever property that might be, is something that we can figure out how to replicate. So in a lot of ways, these sort of argumentative strategies, they really sort of just deny the antecedent of this conditional. They just deny that the, that the ectogenesis procedure will ever be available to us. And that's not necessarily the best way to argue, but it is something that maybe we should think about and consider in more detail. So in other words, um, you might wonder whether or not these are really good objections in the first place. Now, in order to show that the conditional, what I'm calling Warren's conditional is false, what we actually need to do is give a positive argument for why what's called that consequent would turn out false, right? So that's to say we would need to give a positive argument for why a woman or maybe the biological parents collectively would still have a right to the death of the fetus even when ectogenesis is possible. So even when the antecedent conditions, when those are all satisfied, it's still false to say that there would be no right to the death of the fetus. In other words, we would want to give arguments for why there is a right to the death of the fetus, even when ectogenesis is possible. Matheson and Davis, they consider three potential arguments that are all based upon the claim that there is some sort of a right that the woman possesses, uh, and that this right is what grounds that other right to the death of the fetus. The arguments that they consider, the first one is the right to prevent parenthood, the second one is the right to genetic privacy. And the third is a kind of property rights. And so what, th what their paper does is it goes through all three of these arguments and they attempt to show that none of these arguments are going to provide the sort of foundation or the basis for the claim that there is a right to the death of the fetus. And so that is what we will actually start considering now. We're gonna go through in the next series of uh, videos, each of these different arguments to see if, the, if they work or not.